Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and in this video I want to talk about how we use the TI Inspire. So many of you are in my uh, in my statistics class or my calculus class, and you're not used to using the TI Inspire CX or the CAS version for those BC Calc students. If we actually get those, um, then there's no real big difference between the CAS and the Inspire. I mean, there are a couple of, of differences that are kind of key for calculus, but not really for, for any other class, so I'm gonna be using the CAS version, but it's the exact same as what you have in the TI Inspire CX. So I wanted to give you kind of just a little rundown of how the, the Inspire works, what the operating system looks like, um, you know, just some of the basics, so that way you are ready to go when we start class in the fall. I will have a series of these videos showing you how to do a few different things. This one is just kind of what to do, uh, how to turn it on, things like that, okay? So uh, basics, basic basics of the TI Inspire. So let's get going here. And what I have here is my TI Inspire. So notice here, it looks a bit different than the 84, if you're used to the 84. And uh, down here we have some, we have the alphabet, so we can and we will use those. Notice here they're in A, B, C, D, E, F. They're not like Q, W, U, R, T, which is a regular keyboard. And that's an important reason they're in that format. I'm not going to really go over that, but just remember that they're not in keyboard format, okay? Um, when you get, when you turn your calculator on, you get this on, you get this home screen here. And we've got two basic things we can do. We can use the scratch pad, which is, which is basically to use uh, any basic calculations, to use the calculator function, or to use a graph function. Now, the one thing that this does, though, it's, it's basically, it's the quick thing it's the quick calculate or quick graphing we normally in our class we won't use the, the scratch pad we'll use the documents because uh the one thing that one of the things not the one thing there's a lot of things but one of the things that the ti inspire is so much better than the the ti 84 uh, or even i believe the 89 is that the ti inspire cx is a dynamic calculator as opposed to a static calculator and what that means is that every time I enter a function or something into my calculator if it's static that means it's the only time that it'll do that function it won't remember what any of the variables are it won't remember what um, things you did in separate pages and in a dynamic calculator it remembers things as you go through the document so even if you made a new calculator page it's still going to remember the calculations that it made in the previous calculator page so that's kind of nice because sometimes we want to go back we want to copy a function or we want to paste things or we want to just change one little piece of data and we don't want to have to go back and enter in the entire list the entire things which is what you would have to do um, in the in the TI-84s. So the TI Inspire is nice about that. Notice here you have this little uh, pad. You've got up, down, left, and right. In the middle you've got a little touch pad. So if you use that you can actually move your your arrow that's on the screen using this little touch pad. Uh, these little things here, this is going backward a page. This is going forward a page and use control to do that. So the blue will get you in any of these things. This right here will get you to all to so you can see all your tabs. You can save your documents in here. So this is kind of a neat calculator that you can actually save documents. If you want to go back, let's say you were doing something one day and you didn't finish the lab, then you can save that document and come back to it later. This is also really good because you can actually take notes in a in a TI Inspire, so you can save notes and use those later. Uh, this is the back button. It'll go back. Escape will get you out of anything. So if you ever get into a function that you don't want to get into, uh, hit escape and it goes back. Okay, so this is a really important button. I use it all the time. This little button will get you a calculator anywhere you're in the screen. This will get you to the calculator scratch pad. Uh, tab moves, you know, moves things over. Doc, I'll talk about that in a bit. And all these other functions I will talk to you about as we move through. So we've got a lot of different things here that I'll use when I show you the video on using the calculator. Okay, so we've got two basic things here. We've got the scratch pad and the documents. Down here we've got quick tabs to get to any of these types of documents. So we have got a calculator document. I'm sorry, we've got a, a calculator page. We've got a graphing page. We've got a geometry page, which we'll probably not use at all. We've got a data 
uh, we've got actually a spreadsheet page. This is we're going to enter in data if you're in statistics. <clears throat> uh, we will use this in calculus, I believe, as well. This is the data and statistics page. So if we want to make some uh, graphs of some sort, I'll go over that too. This is our notes. So if I click on this, I'll add a notes page. And this is a science page. This you can actually connect your calculator to some scientific tools like temperature gauges and um, uh, mass measurements and weights. And you can calculate, you can connect your calculator and it'll actually store the data in um, as connected to the calculator. Now I don't have those cool things. Um, I don't need them. I'm not a science teacher, but it's really cool that you can do that. So um, from this calculator screen, I'm gonna go ahead and hit new document. If you want, if you're in a document, and you want to go just to that document, you hit current, okay? If you ever want to change your language, you want to change any settings, you can hit settings, and we can pick any of these. Uh, document settings is usually what we, we tend to use the most. In calculus, we're going to want to keep this in radian, okay? We're not really going to deal with degrees at all. So if you're in my calculus class, we're going to deal with things in radian. If you are in my stats class, it really doesn't matter any of these things, okay? Um, you want to keep it at you want to really keep it at float six. You want some decimal places there, so keep it at float six because we're going to definitely use that. But other than this, uh, anything else here is fine. We don't really need anything. So any anything any changes, just hit OK. Let's go ahead and start a new document. So when you hit new document, you're gonna. Uh, it's usually ask you if you want to save. You just say no. You don't want to save it. Okay. It's going to give you all these options, and I'm going to pick use a calculator. All right, just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is a calculator, so I can type things in. You know, five plus two, and hit enter, and then my you know my calculation comes up there. And I'll show you some other things in the other video when I talk about the calculator. So if I want to add a new tab, I'm going to hit Control Doc, which is going to add another page. So I'm going to go ahead and add another page. I'm going to get add a graphs page, and there's my graphs page. Okay. So now if I want to go through pages, I can either, you know, use my little um, touchpad here and go up to the 1.1 and click on that and that'll get me back. Or a quicker way that I found is using control and then the little arrow get, or go through, through other tabs. All right. So let's create a new page here. And let's look at a list and spreadsheet. Okay, so we got a spreadsheet and I'll go over that in another video. We'll add another page here. We'll look at the data and statistics. Now, we don't have anything, any data to, to actually see. But as you see, we're adding in each of these types of pages. And then notes. Notes is kind of cool. You can, you know, you can type in your notes. You know, how do I solve something? Solve y equals mx plus b. Okay, so you can, you can type in notes. Um, anything, any type of function you can use in here, you can add in there. You know, cosine x. So anything you can do in this in, in your calculator, you can add in a notes page. Okay, let's say I want to see all my pages. I hit control up and it'll show me all my pages. Let's say I added in this page by accident. Uh oh, I don't want that there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then now I don't have that tab. And now I want to go back to the first tab. So I'm just gonna click on that, double click, and we got to our first tab again. Okay, so it's easy as that. So remember though that in each of these tabs, the reason we want to use these documents is because like I said, this is a dynamic calculator, which means it's going to remember anything that's in this document is going to carry over into each of these tabs. So here if I define f of x equals x, and I said, you know, f of 1x equals x, if I go back to my calculator and I say calculate, F1, you see how it's bold? When it's bold, it remembers. It's like, hey, I know what that is. That's something in my calculator. Tell me what F1 of 3 is. It's 3 because I put it in my calculator over here. Okay, if I change this to X squared and I hit enter and I go back here and watch what happens when I just hit enter, it's going to give me 9 because it remembered that F1 of 3, now F1 changed to X squared. So, so everything change, you know, as you make changes in your document, it's going to make changes in the calculator. So that's kind of nice because then I don't have to keep entering things in all the time like I would have to do in the 84. So uh, in that way, I think the Inspire is just totally awesome. Um, 
So there's a lot of other things I'm going to go over with you that just makes this, in my opinion, a superior calculator. Um, and that's basically the basics. I really, you know, I'm going to go over in separate videos how to use each of these other things. Um, everything you need here is in menu. So we're going to be able to use all kinds of these types of things in, in menu. Remember, if you can't get out of something, you just hit escape, escape, escape will get you out. If you ever want to go back to home, there you go. You're back in your home screen. All right. So that's the basics of the TI Inspire. What it, you know, what it does, how to you, you know, how to turn it on, how to move around through the document. And then again, like you said, if you want to save your document, you can save your document, right? So you just hit, you know, control up will save that. Oops. Sorry. You want to go to current document and then you want control save and you can save your document. Okay. So we're not going to, we're not going to save this for now, but uh, down here, you know, you got all your little functions here, which I'll go over some of them uh, when I go over each of these separate tabs and what they do. So there you go, guys, the basic, basic, basics of the TI Inspire CX.